Good morning, lovely students. I'm Chris, and I teach the only online course for ESL, English as a Second Language, in the fields of politics, history, economics, and other social sciences. If you're going into university, maybe taking the TOEFL or the IELTS, or if you're just interested in any of these topics, send me an email at the address in the description, and we'll arrange a course that's just right for you. I've planned a number of courses on these subjects, and I've planned a number of courses on these subjects, and in this video, for the first time, I'm going to outline one of those courses for you. This video is an outline of the structure of my course on propaganda. Unlike in previous videos, I won't be directly teaching vocabulary, uh, though I will explain what I'm saying. You can always turn on the closed captioning for these videos if you want. And if you want to understand anything that I haven't explained clearly, please ask any questions you have in the comments or by email, and I'll answer you. The first thing we'll read in the propaganda course is Edward Bernays' book, Propaganda. Bernays is known as the father of public relations, or PR. This book is a great place to start on the subject. Uh, before we do, let me just say, in these courses, you won't be reading whole books unless you really want to. You don't need to read a whole book to learn and understand. It might be just one page here and there to understand the most important points. And then later, when your English is as good as that of a native, uh, then you can read whatever you like. <clears throat> Let's start by reading the first two paragraphs for now. In the course, you'll read a bit more than that, but this is a good start. And while I'll try to explain everything as simply as I can, if you want to learn words from this page, you can pause the video and look them up in a dictionary. Chapter 1, Organizing Chaos. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. So what you can do is start by thinking how much of that you understand. Uh, I'll explain it, like, right now, but if you want to really think about it, if you want to really learn from this video, uh, you know, see what words you understand, see how much of it you can understand, you can follow so far. An important word here, a key word, is manipulation. Manipulating people really means making them do what you want. It could mean tricking them. It, it often does mean tricking them, using them to do what you want them to. So it says right at the beginning, it's important to manipulate the habits and opinions of the masses. The masses here really just means the people, you and me. So, basically, it's, it's important in a democratic society, and he repeats that term several times, that, uh, that, that a, a few people manipulate the masses. Next sentence. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. In other words, the people who are really in charge are the people who tell us what to do, who manipulate us into doing what they want us to do. We are governed. Governed is the verb for government. We are governed. Our minds are molded. Our tastes formed. Our ideas suggested largely by men we've never heard of. In other words, all of our beliefs, all of our ideas, come from someone else. 
This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner, in the manner we tell them, that is, if they are to live together as a smoothly functioning society. So you can see a couple of things just from this first page. First, you can see what propaganda is. It really means manipulating the masses, using and tricking people into doing what a few people on top want the rest of us to do. The second thing you can see here is the contempt these people have for us. Contempt is a noun for looking down on someone. Hmm. You know that expression people have when their lip kind of goes up like that? Hmm. Hmm. That's contempt. Seeing someone as not important or of no value. Bernays and other propagandists see themselves as keeping the masses ignorant and that that's a good thing. He says manipulating people is necessary for society to run smoothly, to function right. It's even in the name of the chapter, Organizing Chaos. They think if they don't manipulate all our choices, it'll be chaos, because we're just ignorant people who can't even run our own lives. That's contempt. If you take my course on propaganda, we'll read a bit more of this book. When you start to learn more about propaganda, you can see it's everywhere. It's not just when they want us to, to support a war or something like that. Everything we hear is supposed to create a world of illusion for us, a world of imagination that doesn't really reflect the way things really are. It gives us all of our beliefs and makes us think we arrived at those beliefs by ourselves. We thought of those things all by ourselves, and that's why we do it. It must be my intelligent brain that came up with this idea, not someone else. That's why it's important to question everything you hear, and that's why I made a series of videos on how to do that. We're still trying to recognize what propaganda is, how it works, and how to recognize it. And one book is never enough to really understand a subject, so let's read from another book. Propaganda, the Formation of Men's Attitudes by Jacques Ellul. Take a look at the bottom right here under Total Propaganda. Propaganda must be total. The propagandist must utilize all of the technical means at his disposal. The press, radio, TV, movies, posters, meetings, door-to-door -door canvassing. Modern propaganda must utilize all of these media. There's no propaganda as long as one makes use in sporadic fashion and at random of a newspaper article here, a poster or a radio program there organizes a few meetings and lectures, writes a few slogans on walls, that is not propaganda. He goes on to explain that each medium that he mentions, you know, the press and so on, uh, is useful, but that they all have to work together to surround the person or encircle the person. That's, that's the word he uses. If every medium is saying the same thing, you'll be thinking that they're all painting an accurate picture of reality, that that's really what's going on and how the world works. On the next page, top right again, it is a matter of reaching and encircling the whole man and all men. Now, this is old language, uh, it, it doesn't really mean man, it means humans. That's important to know if you're reading something old. <laughs> Reaching and encircling the whole man. So all possible 
routes to information will lead the, the person, the individual, to the same conclusions as everyone else because they're encircled by propaganda. We could keep reading. Propaganda tries to surround man by all possible routes in the realm of feelings as well as ideas. It's, it's everything, is what he's saying. It's all of our beliefs. It's everywhere you try to look. Propaganda has a set of beliefs for you. A bunch of things that you're supposed to believe. Propaganda is all the words and messages you hear on TV, in the newspapers, in advertising, from the boss, from all official sources. Because propaganda is what legitimizes everything they do. You should learn this word, legitimize. It means to make something legitimate, which means okay, acceptable. A legitimate reason or excuse or legitimate rule, as in the people consider the king's rule legitimate, or the opposite, illegitimate, not okay, unacceptable. Legitimize is often used when someone has been tricked into doing something or approving of something that's not in their interest. And that's the whole point of propaganda. Propaganda legitimizes things that are not in our interest, things that maybe shouldn't exist. Propaganda has us thinking that some people should have power over everyone and we should all work for them. I don't think that's in our interest. Let's read a couple of passages from the third book we'll use in this course. How Propaganda Works by Jason Stanley. And let's go from here. It is an example of what I will call a flawed ideology. That's important to know for this book. It's not a common term, but it's important in this book. When societies are unjust, unfair, for example, in the distribution of wealth, how much money everyone has, we can expect the emergence of flawed ideologies. The flawed ideologies allow for effective propaganda. In a society that is unjust, due to unjust distinctions between persons, ways of rationalizing undeserved privilege become ossified into rigid and unchangeable belief. Okay, let's look at that last sentence there. Um, when things are unjust, for whatever reason, we rationalize, we learn to rationalize, which we, means we learn to uh, find a reason for. We can always find a reason for anything, no matter how bad it is, even if it's really bad for us. If we're given reasons, we might believe those reasons. That's rationalizing things. We can rationalize undeserved privilege, the privilege of being very rich and powerful. Who says they deserve that? That's undeserved privilege, but we can rationalize it because maybe we think, well, of course we need people to have money and power over us. After all, Bernays told us things would be chaos if they didn't manipulate us. So, uh, this, these ways of rationalizing this privilege become ossified. They, they, they don't change. They become a kind of a law that can't change. And the last sentence, these beliefs are the barriers to rational thought and empathy that propaganda exploits. And let's read this paragraph as well. Flawed ideology is an obstacle to realizing one's goals. On the one hand, those benefiting from large material inequalities, in other words, some people rich, some people poor, will tend to adopt flawed ideologies in the form of false legitimation narratives. Now, remember we learned the word uh, legitimize just now. Um, in other words, a narrative is kind of a story that you tell yourself or that a culture tells itself. 
And so they'll adopt these, these very flawed ideologies, these bad ideas, because it's in their interest. And they turn them into narratives, stories, that legitimize their rule. These false legitimation narratives will blind them to injustice, and hence from realizing their ethical goals. In other words, because they have these beliefs, they, they don't care so much about injustice. They can say, well, that's normal, that's natural, that's how things have always been, and so on. On the other hand, those suffering materially from large inequality, so probably poor people, via lack of land, access to high status positions, or other obstacles to equality of opportunity and attainment, will be led to adopt a flawed ideology of their own inferiority. In other words, they will believe they're inferior because uh, because that's how, uh, that's what they've learned. This will prevent them from realizing their material interests, which in this case really means uh, bringing things back to equality. There are lots of books on propaganda, of course, but these three are the ones we're going to use in this course. With each passage, we'll discuss it and practice the vocabulary. At the end of the course, there's an optional writing assignment. It's always optional because I know my students and I know you have all kinds of things to do, uh, so you can decide what your priorities are. So email me at the address in the description if you'd like to take this or any of the courses I offer, and if not, just use this video, learn the vocabulary, and I hope it can protect you against propaganda. See you next week.